forever and always. Coming to y'all just a little informal. I only have 15 minutes. I'm going to try to squeeze what I need to say very quickly in this allotted time period. So please uh, bear with me and try to keep up because I got to go through this pretty quick. And here we go. <laughs> Black Power family. Assalamu alaikum. Ashe Hotel. You hear these words all the time from black men and sometimes black women, but we're going to talk about black men because black men or the male should be the defender and the warrior and the soldier of the black community. Am I right or wrong? Are you the man that is the provider of woman? The defender of your woman and your children. The defender of the community or the nation. Okay. And it is wonderful that many black men would stand up and have awakened to uh, the knowledge and are attempting and trying to stand up and be a warrior and a soldier. Now, they do a better job when they go into the white man's army because the white man's army puts you in an environment that uh, makes you have no choice but to accept your role as a warrior and a soldier. But when you claim and when you pretend to be a warrior and a soldier in regular environment, then you become an ineffective warrior and an ineffective soldier and I will explain that in just a second. What brings me to this talk is that you have brothers that's talking about black power. We are in war family. We are under threat family. You have brothers that's talking about how bad the black community is. That means the black community is in a poor condition. Sad condition. It is in a environment of extreme danger. It is under threat. It is under siege. So it is understood by the black male that they want to be a soldier and a warrior to fight against the threat and those things which bring harm to the black woman, the children, our community, and hopefully one day our nation. This is wonderful. But at the same time, I look at these individuals, black power, kill the white man, kill the cracker, and they so filled up with talk, with talk about being a soldier. They want to look like warriors. They want to sound like warriors. But they are not warriors. They are frauds. And I'm going to tell you why they are frauds. Because they are having babies and having families. Now this is controversial. Actually it's not controversial, it's reality. But for those who want to justify their actions, then it's controversial and you don't want to hear it. A soldier, listen to me, especially the black man claiming to be a warrior, you don't have time to run around and make babies. You don't have time to run around here and get caught up in love. Oh brother, come on now. It's natural for a man to love a woman. It's natural for a woman to love a man. But your situation is unnatural. And when your situation turns unnatural, then you have to respond accordingly until you bring your situation back to normal, back to nature. The problem that's holding up and is a hindrance to the black community is sex, drugs, and alcohol. And you want to have a family. You do not see in nature animals reproducing when the conditions are not right. They will not have any babies at all or they will limit their babies very minimal. 
And when they are under threat by an enemy, they don't have no babies at all. They are on the defense. They're not thinking about making no damn love. They're not thinking about having no babies. They are under threat. They need to get this enemy off their back. But here you are. Hotel. Black power. And all these things y'all be hollering. Pretending to be a warrior. Pretending to be a soldier. And you spin out babies. And you run around to Running around trying to find love and all this kind of stuff. But yet and still, you claim that you are under threat. You claim that the conditions is poor. That's just like if you are in the boxing ring and somebody is trying to bash your face in on your mind is making love. That's one of the reasons why many say that Mike Tyson lost his championship to Buster Douglas because of his family problems with Robin Gibbons. When a soldier is at war, when a soldier is, in, is on the battlefield, when your community is under threat, you love, you fight for your children and you fight for your wife because of love. But you're not thinking about making love. You're not thinking about those children. You're thinking about getting this damn lion if you are a rabbit off your back but see the problem here is the black man and even though you scream hotel black power I say shalom all these things and you out in the street and you look like a warrior but you still a damn sex addict you still in your mind you are a breeder and so, and not only are you a breeder in your mind, but all around you in this filthy and nasty society, you are surrounded by sex, so it stays there. And as long as a soldier or a warrior, as long as your mind is in the gutter, you cannot be an effective fighter. You are having babies in conditions that you say you don't like. Why are you bringing babies into an environment you say that is bad for that child? And the resources that you and the time and the effort you use to raise a child, to raise a baby in a hard environment, you could be using those same resources to fight the enemy that's making your world you said that makes your world a hell hole well we have to make babies in order to fight the war babies can't fight no war you have enough children well not children you have enough people well you do have enough children we have many of our children in the orphanage foster care. You don't need no more babies. You're not taking care of the children that we have. But there are enough adult men. There are enough adult women to fight this war without adding more and bringing children into an environment that y'all say is a threat to us, is bad for us. Even in the animal kingdom, Animals do not reproduce under bad conditions, poor conditions. They damn sure don't reproduce under a threat. Rabbits and deer and all those animals, they know how to control their sexual urges. They know when to mate, they know when not to mate. You, because your mentality, you are a breeder from slavery. That's all the black man was. You was a breeder. You still have that type of mentality to breed no matter what. Because the slave master going to take care of your children. And for most of you, really for all of you, because as long as your money has the white man's face on it, he's the one that's taking care of your ass. 
and I thought you are a warrior and you are a soldier because that's not what you want. You want to build your own nation. You want to spend money with your face on it. But y'all sex addicts. You porn addicts. I don't give a damn if you married or not. Your priorities is all messed up. You are at war. And all your resources and all that you are should be going into winning that war. You claim that you study history. I just watched an autobiography of the warrior Shaka Zulu. He was a warrior. His mind was not. His mind was not. Uh, it was obsessed with jumping between some woman's legs because he's a warrior. If you are a warrior, if you are a soldier, your top priority is defending your woman, defending the nation, defending your children, building your community. But because y'all are breeders, y'all are soldier, warrior, wannabes. That's why you can't mess with me. Because I'm going to expose you for the fakes that you are. Sex addicts. Porn fiends. And I'm very sure many of y'all drink alcohol. Many of y'all smoke some weed, do a little drugs. Don't bring that fakeness to me. So if you're going to be a warrior and you, you're going to stand up, that's why our conditions have not changed. And a warrior and a soldier develops competent generals. You don't have competent generals. You don't have competent leadership. So at this time, it's good that y'all had a mentality. But when the real leadership begins to emerge, you will see the difference. And instead of saying, I want to be free by any means necessary, like Malcolm said, you will be free. And you will become and get free once you begin to think like a real soldier, a real warrior, somebody that wants to be free instead of you are comfortable living in your present society with your wife and your children. So continue to complain about your neighborhood waiting on the damn police. Keep complaining about what's going on waiting for the real soldier the real warriors to show up keep having your babies and bringing your babies into this environment so your child can be a slave just like your ass cause that's all you are I don't care how many bean pies you sell I don't care how many DVDs on the street you sell you bringing these children into an environment that guarantees them to be a slave and get caught up in freakish and nasty behavior. They grow up not to be on your side, but they side with the enemy because you did not bear them in the proper environment because you weren't a soldier. You a soldier and you a warrior wannabe. So the enemy has a chance to manipulate and form your child. So what's the sense of having all these children when you cannot control the environment so they will have a good shot at being what you want them to be instead of them being formed by the oppressor, being all they can be, and they end up in the white man's army. Stop being silly and be a true warrior. And let us get this to going and get this beast off our back once and for all. That's what I want for you. That's what I want for me. We got to take this serious. And stop being unnatural. And look at this in its real sense. Thank you for listening. Drop down your comments. I know maybe you don't like what I had to say. But it is what it is. Peace out y'all. And enjoy your Sunday. Okay, here we go. 
when it is burned up. But you want to know something? In religious circles, they always say that this place called hell is much hotter than anything that we will experience while we live. And you will burn forever. <laughs> there is nothing that burns forever. Everything always has a beginning and an ending. We don't know nothing in this life that does not have a beginning or an ending. We may not see its beginning but we know it had one and we may not see its ending but all the things in our life and what we understand has a beginning and an ending and when it comes to burning there is nothing that is on fire or can contain heat forever it is even said that one day the sun that we rely on will burn itself out. I don't know, perhaps when that day comes, that which you call the end of the world, that might happen on that day. But that's not the subject. My topic of which I would like to speak just a minute on is the existence of what some call black racist, black supremacy. Now, first of all, there is no such thing as a black racist. There's no such thing as black supremacy. Does not exist. But it does exist in the minds of those <coughs> excuse me, my throat is very uh, sore. But it does exist in the minds of those who really do not know what racism is. Even so, let us compare the so-called black racism or the so-called black supremacists to white supremacy to white supremacists. Now, when was the last time that you saw so-called black races in fact before we even go further I have a question for you prior to the white man show us in history where dark people treated white folks in a racist manner. According to history, dark people or the African greeted and welcomed the white man with open arms as a friend. The black man or the African or any dark person did not view the white man as an enemy and did not begin to act violent and hateful toward the white man until the racist Caucasian people began to murder them, rape their women, take their land, and we know what history, their own history that they write, verify. The so-called black racist is a consequence and a result 
are a people being oppressed. A people who were oppressed and targeted, discriminated against due to racism. As in white supremacy, these people made a skin color that was light supreme over the dark. What is also interesting, if white people or the Caucasian is so intelligent and so superior and all this, why do they have to false flag black channels? Why do they have to hide behind a picture and act like a coward if you're so supreme, if you're so intelligent? This goes to show that you are a liar. And what you're trying to hide is the real intelligence, the real value of those of whom you have made mockery of, who you have demeaned. These Caucasian people who are racist are not used to black people who speak like me who don't give a damn about them, who speak with intelligence, who are learned, who are educated, who can deal, debate, discuss with the best they got. And since the best they have, their knowledge is tainted in deceit, have truth, when a black man carries real truth or even a white person carries real truth, they can't do nothing with them. But the wicked always got to try to paint their victim like their victim behaves like them. So let us compare the black races to the white races. When was the last time black races enslaved a large group of white people and robbed them of the knowledge of themselves, stripped them of their Europeanism and made them Africans by force. Did not happen. Did, do, do not exist. When was the last time white people complained about the laws created by black races. Oh, the white people do not live under laws and do not live in a country by black races. Nowhere in the world, where in the world do a black government, but we're going to stay in America because these suckers always want to talk about in Africa or somewhere else. No, we want to talk about and we're going to stick with what y'all wicked racist suckers have done and are doing in America. Is there a black form of Willie Lynch? I mean Jim Crow. No. How does black racism, how does it affect you? in your daily life does not affect you at all except you get sick and tired of black folks complaining and bringing up the real truth of your history and who you are. Other than that, black people don't bother you. We have no effect and the black races has no effect on you in your daily life. Do you see the so-called black races lynch white men and white women and while they are lynching the white woman and the white man do the black races have a picnic while they tar and feather you no you don't see these things white people go in and out of the black community nobody's following you around nobody is tripping on you but when black people go into certain parts of the white community, you can end up jailed and in prison for no reason. A white woman will scream rape and they will believe her 
How many black women scream rape so that black races can be happy and then they charge you with rape and send you to jail? It does not happen. These black women voluntarily give themselves to you and they love those who rape their grandmothers and great grandmothers. They love the children of the people that brought terror to their own family. This shows you how sick your blacks are. And you are angry at the so-called black races because they don't go for that. You want them sick. You want black people sick. But if somebody rape your white woman, if somebody beat up your dog, you can't never forget. There is no comparison. There is no comparison between so-called black races and white races. Because black racism, black races don't exist. You have black people who are sick and tired of being mistreated has nothing to do with racism because they are not in a position to do anything nor do you hear the majority of them wanting to do anything to Caucasian people they just want to be left alone and want to be able to be an independent people and try to find the knowledge that was stolen from us as a people Many of these so-called black races, they work for white people. Some of them even have white associates. But the list can go on and on. There is no comparison. It is silly and it's stupid and it sounds dumb. There are no government statistics about so-called black racism. A person can hate white people if they want. They can dislike white people if they want. That is not racism. And the reason why dark people hate white folks is because of the evil that living in the society controlled by white people based on racism because even if you watch the white man's own news program, he will show you that there is a difference in money, in housing, employment, everything is different. And the black people of the United States, although we fight in all the wars, although our ancestors built this nation on their backs, although we have contributed to the society over and over again we are not treated as a citizen you have people that come across the border and in fact governor the governor of Illinois just signed a bill so that illegal the children of illegal immigrants can get private funding to go to college but you have black and even poor whites struggling to pay for college. There's something wrong. And that wrong is not the black races. That's a result of the wrong of white supremacy. And if you want to solve your problem, you have to deal with white supremacy. Not the symptom or the result of white supremacy. But it's up to you. But you don't want to because that's fighting against white folks. And you will support your evil ancestors no matter what they do. But they bringing you down slowly but surely. It's your choice. Be black racism, that's stupid and it's silly. You should be ashamed of yourself. Peace forever and always. Ah. Let me get a little comfortable here.
This is your brother Talik Ibn Ra, and this is the Reality's Temple on Earth. The little white lie. The little white lie. That's something that people say that the little white lie is a small lie, and usually we leave, <laughs> usually we use the little white lie in order so that we can avoid hurting people's feelings. The little white lie. Well, on this video, I want to talk about white people. I want to talk about white folks. And I am not concerned with the little white lie. So after I say what I believe needs to be said, if you want to uh, unsubscribe or you want to uh, bring your little infantile, immature, wacky comments to this video, knock yourself out. Um, I will always say that all response videos are welcome. But I'm not going to sit here and tell a little white lie. I'm not about telling lies. Lies hurt. Lies hurt. But you want to know something? When it's all said and done, it's better that you be lied to, not lied to, I'm sorry. It's better that you've been being told the truth rather than told a lie. Because even though that lie hurts, I mean, even, man, I'm all mixed up. Even though the truth may hurt rather than that lie, it's better that you go through that hurt than go with this lie because the lie is false. In the end, it won't be in your best interest. So it won't be in my best interest if I have something to say about white people and I keep it locked in or it's, it's something that's hidden. I'm not going to hide nothing from you. Whatever I think, like I said before in a video, this is my personal opinion. You can change my mind because I could be wrong. But I'm going to bring this to you and bring this message to you, what I want to say to the best of my ability, and then we can talk about it. Not as children, not bickering back and forth, Oh my dad, 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 all that old kindergarten stuff. You can talk to me like the civil quarter and mature adult person that you really are. Now, here we go. I want to make this I want to make this example. I'm a, a a male from a specific family. In my family, the males that surrounded me when I was growing up, they were whoremongers. They were drunkards. They were content in being sharecroppers or factory workers, which there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you're making a living. Now, the males in my family, they went to jail, but they were not criminals. They usually went to jail in relation to their whoremonging, women called the police on them or because they were drunk out in the streets uh, disturbing the peace and minor infractions such as that. I'm from that family. If you know me, you know I'm from that family. You can say, well, Tyleek, your uncle is a drunkard and your father was a drunkard and they whoremonging. I come from out of that, that maleness. Those are my relatives. But that don't make me them. That don't make me them. I'm not a whole mother. Never have. The thought don't even, I don't even entertain the thought. I don't like liquor. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't do none of those things. I'm totally opposite of them. So, what are you trying to get at, brother? Now we're going to bring this to the question. Is the white race a race of devils? According to the history of the white race themselves, their scholars, what have they done in their history? How did they come into power? Did they come into power through love? No, they did not. They came through uh, to power through murder, through rape, through the destruction of this planet and its animals. Even to the point where the black Muslims said that the white man is a race of devils. 
What is the devil? Matter of fact, who taught us about devil? The white man is the one who taught us about devil. Prior to that, there was no black people calling the white man the devil until the white man conquered the blacks and gave them the Bible and taught them that there's a God and then there's this devil person. Regardless to whether it was the Bible or Quran. And if you really knew the Bible and Quran, you'll find out that the Caucasian race is the authors or behind both of those books. That's why they sound so similar. That's why they almost sound the same. But anyway, what is a devil? A devil is simple. The devil is pure evil. One, the master of treachery, deceit. A devil is whose wickedness affects more than themselves and others. Why is the white man called the devil? Because he has touched not only his race, but other races. There is no animal on this planet that has had peace with the white man on it. He messes with the microbes. He has disturbed this planet. So now you have so now you have global warming. And other countries are copying him. He's the one that started all this cooking of fossil fuels. Found in oil. It made him rich. All his inventions, his cars and his airplanes affect the environment. The TV. All these things, everything that the Caucasian people have touched. No matter the science. You get when you still get that computer, that computer got poisons in it that would affect the earth, your water, your air. These cars that you drive affect your environment. It is death and destruction. So a devil is simply, is simply when one evil goes outside of himself. And in fact, he is trying to take his way of doing things into the universe. Even beyond this planet itself. So yes, black people have killed. Chinese people have killed. All races of men do evil and wicked things. But no one's evil. According to the white man's or Caucasian people's own history that they wrote have affected this planet. When the Native American people used to kill animals, they felt sad and there was rituals and they used every part of that animal. When Caucasian people come into power, they kill and raise millions of cows and sheep and chickens. Waste I don't know how much. Kill them. They die in these slaughterhouses in fear. There is no remorse. There is no feeling for them. It's about money. It's about greed. That's what makes you a devil. You murder for lust and material wealth. So the Bible that you wrote goes to say, and Jesus asked the Jew, Are, are you all of your father the devil? So the question goes, that since the white race has proven itself to be a race of devils. But for those Caucasian people out there who said that they are good, you should not take offense because your race, I, just like I don't take offense, that I come from a family of men who are hormones and alcoholics because that's what they were. But I'm not them. So you can talk about them. I don't care. That's not me. So if, the, so if somebody says that the Caucasian or a race of devils, why are you affected? Why do they make you angry and upset? Because that's the history. That's what, that's proven. That's actual fact. That's what they are. Are you, are, are you like your father? Are you a devil too? Maybe that's why you're so damn upset. Because you wouldn't be. Matter of fact, I know there's a lot of Caucasian people. Don't trip off of that. Because I'm not that. I'm not like them. And my actions prove I'm not like them. I'm nothing left like my father, the devil. And I'm not a devil. So why are you getting so upset that somebody called the white man the devil? So what? 
And why are you so babyish when black folks have been called niggas and cool and shine? We took it like a man. If somebody call you dumb, take it like a man, Chuck. What's the big deal? What's the big deal? I am very proud to have white friends because they are not of their father, the devil. This is your brother Talik Ibn Ra. Jot down your comments. You know how these videos go. Peace for heaven always.
So I'm telling y'all, leave this man alone. Go, get out your high horse. Go ahead on and get this brother chair. He's a sweet man, peaceful and everything. Otherwise, you know, you know, and y'all gonna have to handle and deal with Smokey Joe, and you don't want none of this. So with that said, I'm going back to my vacation. Y'all hang in there, and always remember, you know, Smokey Joe is not your okay. girl. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I am the Angel Snuffin' Up 7 on YouTube. Your brother, the host of this, uh, of this internet ministry, uh, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk about what we know of as pro-black teachings. Pro-black teachings would be uh, something like the Nation of Islam teachings, the Hebrew Israelite Nation, the Moorish Science Temple, and various others. What they have in common is that they do teach black people and bring us positive things about ourselves. They teach us and inspire us to, uh, it brings us high self-esteem and wants and encourages us to be independent as well as learning about that which was stolen from us, our language, our culture, our God, and all those things that was robbed from us during what we call the period of black commercial or chattel slavery in America. And this is wonderful. I'm not going to sit back, and this is not anything to bash pro-black teachings. What, bash pro black, black teachers, brother. Don't you come? What you talking about? Ain't that pro black teachings? No, I'm not. I don't advocate pro black teachings. What? You got me fooled. If you look at my channel, my channel says my first priority is my people because I am black. My first priority is the black man and woman the descendants of slaves in America, the first priority because of our horrid condition. But once that condition has been brought under control, I am not about pro-black anything. It is about the saving and the upliftment of the human family regardless to color. But that cannot happen until the least of us and the least of us are the so-called Negro in America, the ones who are on the bottom of the ladder until they get healed, until they stop crawling, they learn how to walk, then nothing is going to happen for the rest of us. And that's why the rest of y'all, Caucasian or Asian or whatever you want to call yourself, you will stay in war. You will stay in confusion. You will continue to die needless, needlessly from disease and other and pestilence because those are who you turn your nose up at, the black man and woman in America, until they are healed and they are part of the human family. It's just like part of your hand. Until your hand that has been injured has been healed, then the rest of the body can't function as a whole total unit. And when you lose that, then you become handicapped. So until black people in America have become healed, humanity is handicapped. My time is running out, but let me make uh, say this about pro-black teachings. Pro-black teachings was designed to uplift us from out of an inferior position. 
Because under white supremacy, we was taught we was nothing. So pro-black teachings was designed and created to counter white supremacy. Because if you notice, if you take the black out of these teachings that have been taught to us as black people and put white, you have white supremacy. You have white teachings. It'll be pro-white, pro pro-Caucasian. And that's my problem with pro-black teachings. Now back in the day when these things was designed, They meant something because at that time there was no doubt you had a vicious enemy. We knew, well, some of us, because some of us still love Caucasian people who would kill us, just like we still admire them today. But the majority of us, a good majority of us, we knew who the enemy was. So when these pro black teachers came to us and these pro black teachers taught us that the white man was the devil, we embraced it. Yeah, he sure in hell is. He just raped my mama last night. He just strained my uncle up a few days ago. So we had this hatred. And it was justified. The white man lied and told us that we was a cursed people. And he told us that he saw us in the jungle swinging from tree to tree with tails and all these damn lies. Now we turn around. And with pro-black teachings, some of it is true and some of it is not. And But anyway, re regardless, he's a devil. He's old raggedy caveman, eating raw flesh, having sex with dogs. So we, according to him, we jungle bunnies. And according to us, he's nothing but some old savage cave guy. Having sex with dogs and eating raw flesh King Barry is dead and we taught him everything he know and the white man said he taught us and brought civilization we were savage don't y'all see how this correlate it's the same thing but it was needed now there is no need because if you use race the white man the oppressor is the one who created race so how can we use race to uplift us and get us out of this condition when it was the creation of race making one inferior and one superior over the other that caused this to begin with how can this save us brothers and sisters pro-black teachers y'all talk to me somebody kept getting on my case because I say that all Caucasians was not involved in the destruction and the atrocities that happened to black people and these pro-black people keep trying to tell me all oh, white folks. Do you know how many white people there are in the world? Look at all the nations of Caucasian people. All the individuals. So you're telling me they all was involved in this. Then I asked them to show me proof, evidence. They can't do it. You know why? Because you're caught up in your pro-black philosophy that is mixed with falsehood and truth. Just like the white man taught us. Truth mixed with falsehood. The same thing. Many of us don't question the white man. And when we got these pro-black teachings, we don't question them. The white man said, I can, I can prove what I said with science. And these pro-black people do the same thing. They prove what they talk about with science. But in both situations, if you notice, they only go just far enough to prove their ideology. I want to show that the white man is inferior. So here you go. And the melanin do this and the melanin do that. And the white man want to show that the black man is inferior. See, look at the brain size. Same type of thing. Those things was needed. Pro-black teachers is needed. We need to love one another. We need to be independent from Caucasian people. We need to protect the black woman. We need land of our own. We need to teach our children. But that, what we have and we hold on to, 
is outdated because at this point in time we should be beyond black we should be beyond race because you brothers and sisters we are more than that we are more than Africans we are more than black we damn sure more highly uh, progressed than Negroes and colors I would think we need to progress move forward and you want to fight and kill the white man but this white man ain't a fighter like he used to he can get down but he using this now and you don't and the only way that one God can deal with another God is that he got to bring a superior wisdom and intelligence and y'all looking for the past past intelligence past wisdom that don't phase this guy because he's evolved he's greater smarter than he was back in 1930 but you're going back to 1930 to try to deal with a white man that has evolved in 2010 my time is out do y'all understand where I'm coming from jot down your comments let's talk about this issue too I'm your brother Talik Ibn Ra, Ra meaning no harm to you this was and is the reality's temple on earth in the name of my ancestors peace forever and always I am the angel snuffed up seven your brother and hopefully your friend Talik Ibn Ra and welcome once again to another version of the Realities Temple on Earth. When I was little, I was growing up in the late 1960s, early 1970s. During this period of time, there was a lot of racial turmoil. I knew some of it, but not a whole lot. As a child, I was basically ignorant to race relations in America. When I was a little boy, because of my dark color, basically, I was rejected by black people the so-called Negro. Even my own personal family members made mockery because I was darker. So when I went to school and because of my dark skin I was made an outcast. So my friends that I associated with was uh, was outcast also. My friends was the homosexual acting children. My friends was the obese fat children. My friends were the smart, intelligent, nerd type Caucasian children. Those were my friends. Those were my associates. Anybody that was an outcast. When I was associating with my Caucasian friends, and because nobody told me about this race thing, I just viewed them as my friends. We were all outcasts. This is something that we knew. But later, I would have my relatives that joined the Nation of Islam would begin to influence my mind and talk about white people or Caucasian people. And they would talk about how much they hated white people because of the mistreatment that we had in this country. And after listening to them speak about how Caucasian people mistreated us in this nation, I began to look at my Caucasian friends different. 
and I began to extricate myself from them. Is that a word? <laughs> I want to sound smart. <laughs> you know how we do it. And I began to accept this teaching. Now, mind you, what I was being taught by the by the nation of Islam was not coming directly from Elijah Muhammad or any of the Elijah Muhammad's ministers. This was coming from my relatives who was giving me their opinion about how they saw things and they made it very clear how much they hated white people. When I began to learn and study the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad myself, I began to learn that his teachings was not about this hatred. But when we began to learn about these atrocities done to us, this hatred begins to develop in us. And that what that is what my relatives was teaching and brought to me. And I began to have this hatred. So when I was 18 years old. I applied to a college in Flushing, New York. And I was going to orientation. And I was crossing the street. And I was filled up with this hatred for white people who once, when I was a child or younger, they were my best friend. It was this older white woman in front of me. And she began to stumble over herself. And I knew she was going to fall. And she began to fall. I could have stopped her from hitting that, the concrete ground. But in my mind, I had so much hatred for white people that was in me. That instead of trying to, when she began to fall, instead of trying to save her from hitting the concrete, I sidestepped and watched her hit the hard concrete. And I said in my mind, good for you, for what you've done to my people. And the crowd that was around me went, whoo, because they knew I could have saved her, but I didn't. So at that point in time, I was happy about what I'd done. I was, yeah, she probably helped lynch some black man to hell with her. But you know, brothers and sisters, there's something that's called a guilty conscience. With all my hatred that I have, that I had for that time that was built up for white people, why was my conscience bothering me? Because I let this person, this white woman that I considered a devil, a she-beast, why is my conscience bothering me? My conscience was bothering me because I was wrong. I did wrong. And I allowed this hatred that perhaps was unjustified to blind my thinking. Later on, this thing would bother me. I would drive. I would. I would drive my car in a ditch and fall down in this ditch. And before I even got down in the ditch, good. I was surrounded by white people to help me get out of the ditch. I was stranded on the side of the road when I used to drive trucks over the road, stuck in the mud. White man stopped. Out of all, I seen black people pass me by. And the white man stopped by with a chain that he needed for himself, and he broke that chain trying to get me out of the mud. My conscience began to bother me. Because here are Caucasian people helping me get out of a ditch, 
help me get out of the mud, this white woman that I let fall on the ground could have been their mother, their auntie, their grandmother, but because of hatred. And when we have hatred, brothers and sisters, I understand what the atrocities that Caucasian people did. But we must put all things in its proper place. Those who you tried to punish didn't do it. The only ones who could have punished those people during that period of time was those who were being affected, but they didn't. It is wrong for us to punish and hate those who didn't do nothing for us, do, do nothing to us. That's wrong. That's why my conscience bothered me. I asked a person in black power, I said, you tell me, since black folks are so good, why was it a black man that falsely charged me with a crime? Then it was a black judge that kept me locked up. And it was black people that snitched to the white doctors, my white oppressors, that kept me locked up. But it was a white woman that risked her job and brought me law books and brought me black history books. And it was a white woman judge and my white lawyers, they helped me get out of the situation. Why should I hate them? It was the black folks that was keeping me locked up. Oh, man, this is... Shut down your comments. I want y'all to answer a quest, question for me. Why did my conscience bother me? And it's sad. Our hearts are so full of hatred that we won't allow our conscience to talk to us because our conscience will guide us in the right direction. Peace, y'all. Time is up. In the name of my ancestors, peace, fam, and always, welcome once again to another very, very exciting edition <laughs> of the Reality Step on Earth. I am your host, your brother, and hopefully your friend, the administrator for the Reality Step on Earth, Talik Even Ra. You know, I, I'm probably I'm probably getting a lot of pro-black folks upset. Really upset. Because in their eyes, I am becoming a defender of white people. White people don't need me to defend them. They have large business offices that contain lawyers. In fact, they make the law around here. In fact, if they really wanted to shut your mouth, they could, if they really wanted to. <laughs> so you should thank them for the right of freedom of speech. They don't need my help to do nothing. But see, the problem is, you are brainwashed into this this uh, tunnel vision that is a reverse version of white supremacy. The only thing that you have done is you want to replace the white oppressor and put yourself in his place. And I do not represent racial superiority of nobody. So many of you have come to this channel because I have to speak what is true. So if white folks done it, then I got to say it. I didn't make it up. No history. You done it. Not Brother Tali. These things happened way before I came into existence. So what you angry at me for? Those are your behaviors, not mine. I didn't do it. I didn't say it, you done it. So what the hell you gonna get angry at me for? 
So many pro-black folks come to this channel. Here, tell them, brother, tell them, brother. But it's our turn. Because we ain't goody, we're not righteous and holy and goody two shoes. We have to accept responsibility. We have to make proper choices. If we, you know, you have to accept your own also. It's as simple as that. One of the things that have been taught in some of these fairy tale fictional play, uh, pro black teachings is that they claim and they say that the white man is naturally evil. Now back in the day when I was a child, when I was immature, I didn't know no better. I did not think for myself. I did not question because I didn't like white people and anybody that said something bad about white people, I was happy to accept what they had to talk about. Just like y'all do. Because you're upset and you've been taught or conditioned to have this hatred for Caucasian people. But see, I represent justice and being fair. And I'm going to be fair to all no matter what race they are. And if you are a fair and just person, you claim that's what your God represents. And what you represent, you so peaceful and you represent what is fair and what is good, then give everybody justice. Even a murderer is supposed to be given a fair trial. And he's supposed to be given justice no matter what we say. We must prove our allegations that he committed a murder. So if the white man is naturally evil, he is naturally wicked. The key word is natural. Then let us see. It is natural for us to breathe air. All of us, any human being that refuses to use his lungs to breathe in this atmosphere will die. It is natural to all of us. It is natural for us to have hair on our bodies. In some cases, some of us don't have any hair. That's unnatural. Natural is that which is common to all, a common trait. So when you said that the white man is the devil and he is naturally evil, that's a common trait. Over 90 some percent should practice and behave in that manner. So that's what I'm going to try to answer. Is the white man naturally evil and wicked? Let us see. It is natural for dogs to smell each other's butt. That's how they communicate. It is natural for snakes to try to find warm places because snakes are cold-blooded. They need heat, an outside heat source to warm them up. That's natural. If you look at the animals, that's natural to all of them. You don't see something outside of that. That's what's natural. So if the white man is naturally evil and wicked, then if you know your history, then you tell me why a certain group of them, if it is natural, a big, matter of fact, a big percentage of them did not participate in the slave trade. Now, white people were behind in America, the commercial slave trade. But if you know your history, you claim that you know your history, then you can't say it's natural at all, because all did not participate. If I'm wrong, prove it, bring it to me. I want you to prove that all, because even in America, there was a group of Caucasian people called abolitionists, and y'all never want to bring this up, because to bring it up messes up your damn lie. There was a group of Caucasian people in America calling themselves abolitionists. One of the number one figures of, abo of the abolitionist movement during the Civil War, prior to the Civil War. Matter of fact, he was almost the cause of it. Was the abolitionist called John Brown. And he and his family which were also white.
and they were Christians. I'm going to say that again. They were white Christians. John Brown said that his Bible said that slavery was wrong. Because John Brown, listen to me, white people. John Brown was able to think outside of the leadership of America. That's something y'all don't want to do. How can you have the nerve to say he's naturally evil? If he was naturally evil, how come he's doing outside of his wickedness or whatever? Then look at Caucasian history. Study it. It's on the History Channel. It's on the Discovery Channel. It's everywhere. Read your books. Bring your proof to me. Make me out a liar. I don't mind being made out a liar. I'll be happy to apologize to your ass. But from what I see and from what I learned, I can't say all white people are evil. I cannot say that they are naturally wicked. They have done nothing no more wicked than our people when they were killing each other being conquerors. And they still, our people in Africa, a lot of them, they still hurt and kill black people today. You explain that to me. Ain't no white folks around. Even before European colonization, these blacks was killing each other, going to war with one another. These Native Americans was doing the same thing. The Chinese was doing the same thing. There were no white people. So I, so we're, so... Where does natural evil stuff come from? These black, pro-black teachers came from and they were designed to counter these white supremacist teachings to give black people high self-esteem because white supremacy made us inferior and gave us low self-esteem. We're doing the same thing that the evil, wicked people are doing. So how are you any way better? The only thing you, we have done is flip the script. So now you want to make them feel bad. Oh, you came out of a cave. You evil and you wicked. And you was a beast and walking on your all fours. You just want to flip the script and do the same thing. You should not want to do the same thing. We should be here to be fair and we should be just. Otherwise, we're going to get the same results they have. Do you want the same type of results that they are facing today? I don't want it. It's unnecessary problem, and on top of that is all the damn lie. Tell the lies to make yourself feel better. Degrading somebody, just like they did, degrading us so they can make themselves feel better. And some of y'all do that with, in your own personal life. Jot down your counter. My time is out. Think about it. Bring me your proof and show me how natural this is. I have no problem with that. Jot down your comments. This was and is the reality's temple on earth. Peace forever and always. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra. And welcome once again to another edition of the reality's temple on earth. I am the angel snuffing up seven, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I just wanted to uh, offer my response to this question about the extermination of white people and to clarify my position on this uh, issue or subject matter. I first uh, would like to say, in revolution, according to past history, we have been unable to have revolution or rebellion of the people without bloodshed. So perhaps sometimes uh, this is something that cannot be avoided. But in the meantime, I would hope that we would think a bit more clearer. I would think that we would be more wiser. And in these things, I want to offer us these questions. Exterminate the white people. Kill the white people. That's what I hear. That's why. That's what some people send me as an email that I don't understand that the white man must be exterminated. That will solve the world's problems. Now listen to these points I make.
before you come up with that conclusion. These must be dealt with before you begin your uh, insane death march to exterminate this uh, Caucasian people. First of all, white is just a color. The color didn't do nothing to us. Caucasian color did not enslave. Caucasian color had nothing to do with any of these evils. It's just the color of a person, a shade of their skin. Either we have pigment in our skin or we don't. The main thing that you must take in consideration here is the mentality that encompass or that some or a vast majority of Caucasian people have. It's the mentality that has caused or wrecked havoc upon darker people or this planet itself. That's something that you must have to deal with because in many situations around the earth, there are no Caucasian people. Just like a brother said in our neighborhood, there are no Caucasian people in our neighborhood. But we murder each other as black people. There are no Caucasians and we steal from one another. There are no Caucasians, but a black man will rape a black woman. Where is the Caucasian involved? It is not skin color. So you can exterminate all the white people, but if that mentality is not destroyed, the only thing you did was set aside a color or a race of a people carrying that type of mentality, but you have still will lose because that mentality is still within us. Now, you want to kill the white people, exterminate the white people. You only want black people involved, but you don't have the support of black people. We are divided. He is over there, she is over there. We have no army. You have no money to support your army. You do not have the support of black people in America or around the world. You have no allies. There is no African nation that's going to back you up. There is no foreign nation that's going to back you up in your attempt. You have not the proper armaments, the proper tanks, the proper bombs, the proper tools needed in order to carry out this plan of extermination. <laughs> and what is so sad, more, uh, many of you who claim that you want to exterminate black people and you call people cowards. I don't see any videos, this is your attitude, but I don't see any videos praising the young Nigerian, uh, young black man that attempted to blow up the airplane. None of you, even though that's what you said, that you want to commit or exterminate the white people. Here's a young black man that was going to take down a whole plane of them. You don't praise him, you don't honor him because you talk about somebody being a coward, but you won't say that outright. You might say it in your mind because you don't want that type of attention brought to you because really, you're a coward yourself. Anybody can say anything. That young Nigerian did not only, might not have only said it, but he took action upon it. You really don't want no part of this. Then you uh, are insane in your thinking. The only thing that's going to happen is that the black people that you claim that you want to free, those of us who are part of law enforcement, those of us who are in the military, will come and hunt you down when you begin your activity of so-called exterminating white people. You will be called a, a domestic terrorist, and you will be hunt down, and you will be killed. Then you will either be taken to the morgue, or you will be given life without parole or you will sit on death row for years and you will not be seen as a hero you will be seen as an insane criminal running around killing white people you know why you will be seen not as a hero because in this world you don't want to admit but there are Caucasian people there are white people who had nothing to do with slavery that do, uh, that do not practice discrimination or evil against darker people. But you and your rage, you want to be just like them because they don't give a damn what black man they kill or oppress. They were just running around lynching a black man for the hell of it. And that's your mentality. So 
you won't be seen as a hero because you will be seen as the killer of innocence. Like I said, whether you like it or not, there are Caucasian people, there are white people, and you show me any proof that they had anything to do with the oppression of black people. There is a uh, minority that have always stood against slavery, that have always stood against segregation and the oppression of black people in America. And you just went around and exterminate the white people just like they decided to oppress all of us. So your attitude is no better than theirs. Then, let's say for instance, if you do, for some reason, exterminate the white people, then what are you gonna do? What type of world do you plan on building? What do you wanna do? Turn everybody into Muslims? Do you wanna turn everybody into Egyptians? Do you want to turn everybody into Moors? What is your plan for the human family? What do you plan for Asian people? What do you plan for the Native Americans? You want to exterminate the white people. You say that they are the main problems. But then when the white people are exterminated, you will continue to have problems because the mentality that really is the root of it, that is the problem, is still there. Just the fact that you want to exterminate white people shows that you are no better than they are. You still have the same mentality. Instead of it being uh, white uh, superiority, now you want to make it black and you want to blame all the white people for your problems, just like they blame us for all their problems. And we become no better than them. We should be wiser, we should be smarter, we should be wanting to create a world that is different than them. Because their world is crumbling, and those who like them, prior to them, that thought like that, they no longer exist. And if you want to exterminate the white people and create a world with this type of mentality, then we also will continue the same legacy and we won't exist. I suggest that we be smarter, I suggest that we be wiser. And in this idea, this way of thinking, we should set aside and go on. If we want to exterminate white people, exterminate them in that mentality and decide to create a world that is different than what they've done, then when you destroy that mentality, you will exterminate the white people. This is your brother. Jot down your comments. This was and is the Realities Temple on Earth. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, welcome, welcome, welcome. Mm. I am the Angel Snub Nub 7 here on YouTube, and welcome once again to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I am your host, your brother, and hopefully your friend. <laughs> Maybe I won't be a friend after this one. <laughs> Well, those of you who watch these videos, you know where I'm coming from. But uh, I'm still your friend. I'm still your buddy. Give me, give me your hand. Let's shake on it. <laughs> Don't get angry now. We just, we just talking. And hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. Brothers and sisters, friends and, and enemies. <laughs> Whether you like it or not. Whether I like it or not, the real truth is that to believe in God is an unnatural behavior. I know you, what, uh, uh, why do you keep saying those things? Look at the sky, look at the moon. To believe in God is an unnatural behavior. And I give you an example why. For a man to want a woman is a natural behavior. This behavior is within us because there is a need to reproduce. If the 
man does not lust or want the woman, then we cannot reproduce. So in order to get that job done, nature puts inside all of us an attraction to one another. And the attraction leads to touchy-feely, which ends up causing our uh, genitalia to intercourse with one another. The result, nature tricks us by giving us temporary enjoyment in the flesh to bring before us, to bring out of us, rather, another human being. That's natural, and that is something the majority of the human family experiences. But then, of course, we have the unnatural when the man is attracted to another man or female to another female. That is unnatural because that lust and that desire, it is a taught behavior or it comes from out of a unnatural condition like prison or enslavement and things of that nature. And then and within society, when it is acceptable behavior, then it goes on and on. And some of us, when we are exposed to that thought so early in life, because maybe we were shy or maybe we were placed in bad position, then we accept those behaviors. But as children, there's no baby, there's no infant that, shows, that automatically shows signs of these behaviors because as an infant, our minds, we are still in our natural state. But as time goes on, these unnatural behaviors, this unnatural condition is, in, is influenced and it is, induced, it is introduced into our psyche. If the belief in God was a natural behavior, then you don't have to teach me nothing. You don't have to teach me to lust for no woman. That's something that's just going to come to me. Because I know as a young boy, that was something that was never taught to me for say. It was just a feeling. As I got older and watched it, I'm like, why am I being attracted to these women like that? It's just something that comes over us. That feeling never came to me as far as God and religion was concerned. This was something that was taught to me as a baby and a child. It was not something natural to me. That which is natural. That which is natural is what it is. It only comes in that form. There is not countless versions. Versions, even in the unnatural behavior in the sex drive, man to man, woman to woman, it is limited. But when it comes to religion, countless versions of nature. Dogs do what dogs do. There is no countless versions of dog behavior. But when you see dogs, walk on their hind legs and they chase balls and try to play basketball. That is unnatural behavior because men taught them those things. That is an unnatural behavior. You never met God. Religion comes up out of ancient people due to their fear of death. During their, due, to, due to their fear of the unknown. And then the wise and the slick among the people said, uh, they fear death. They fear the unknown. They created this thing about God because people are curious about life. They fear death. So they created, religion was created in order to control the masses of the people. To get you, control you without controlling you, without using physical force. Because they could control you by using armies soldiers and by using fear but it is easier to control you through religion and though that type of thought process if God exists you would know that as a fact but you are taught to believe a belief is not a fact so God could be could be not well brother if God don't exist why don't you it's not up to me to prove anything God should exist just like I'm talking to you on YouTube. You don't have to believe Brother Talik is on YouTube. You know for a fact. And you can talk like a fact. But you can't do that with God. You never met God. This is just something in order to 
control the masses of the people and make you a robot, make you a, a voluntary slave for those who know how to control the religion or that frame of thought. This is unnatural teachings. Again, why do you say that it's unnatural? It is unnatural because it hinders you the ability to think for yourself. So that is why some of y'all said, well, according to the Holy Quran, well, because I'm a Christian, you can't think for yourself. You depend on a book that's thousands of years old. This is 2010. The human family, you might have similarities, but this is 2010. This is not 2,000, 4,000 years ago. It hinders your own creativity, your own self-thought. Because if you begin to think for yourself, you know what's going to happen? You're going to reject the Holy Quran. I'm not saying that there's not no good in the Quran. I'm not saying that there's not the, nothing good and wisdom of intelligence in the Bible. But you begin to think for yourself. You go beyond these books of 2,000 years ago. Because the human being is supposed to progress. These books are designed to put you on the path of progress. To take you from an ancient people to a more modern person. And you have done that technologically with the car, with the airplane, with YouTube. and But, but the basic human being, you are still crawling. And you have yet to begin even to walk. Because religion, the belief in God... It's unnatural thinking and it hinders the thought process. So you can talk about God, but you'll never be one. i say that again to you. You're supposed to be children of God, but you'll never be that because you're still crawling on your all fours. And you'll never progress because you can't think for yourself. And, these, and the Bible and the Quran can only take you to a certain plateau. Then it matches itself out. So the only thing you can do, instead of progress in the college, you continue to review what you did in kindergarten, review what you did in the eighth grade, review what you did in high school, but you never make it to college. You never make it to being a god. Because you've been held back. Because you can't think for yourself. You can't create for yourself. And any god, God creates. God takes Nothing and make something out of it. You can't do it. You keep going backwards. Somebody's doing your thinking for you. So your eyes and your ears waiting on, on every word from the preacher and the minister. When you should be, you, whatever the minister know, you should know. Whatever the pastor know, you should know. Because you think for yourself, you do for yourself, you create for yourself. But you have become, it is unnatural, you become a slave. And, a, and slavery is an unnatural condition. You've allowed yourself to become a voluntary slave. A slave to some God you never met. Slave to a doctrine that don't feed you, keeps you going backwards. You never evolve to the next plateau. That's why a lot of y'all don't understand where I'm coming from. Because I'm encouraging us to think for ourselves and go beyond kindergarten. But if y'all want to remain an unnatural, <laughs> that's y'all problem. Jot down your comments. This was and is the reality's temple on earth. In the name of my ancestors, peace, five and always, welcome to another edition of the reality's temple on earth. I am your host, the angel snuffed up seven, here on YouTube. Uh, your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Rahm. This is, of course, the year we know of as 2010. There is no reason at all for the masses of people to be ignorant. 
one of the greatest things that have, that have happened to humanity in recent times is the internet. One of the greatest things that has happened within recent times is YouTube. Thanks to the internet. <clears throat> Even if you don't want to read, you have many YouTube videos. There is so much information offered on YouTube and the internet in general. It's too much. All kinds of ideas, all kinds of information. Those who want to be ignorant and stupid and foolish and silly, that's because that's what they have decided they want to do. Like I said, you don't really have to read a lot. There are many 10-minute videos on YouTube. Some of the videos are longer than 10 minutes. But we shouldn't be so ignorant, meaning we don't know. And we definitely can't say we don't know it all because there's just too much to know. So I'm not going to attempt to try to know too much and be a know-it-all, but try to be an expert in what I am trying to present to us. What is becoming more and more clear is that this black versus white war, white versus black war, black versus white war, the hatred and the prejudice and all these different things, must come to death. It must come to an end. It is bad for black people. It is also bad for white people. It is also bad for those in the middle. It is a detriment to all of us. We need to stop this for the benefit of the future generations of both human species calling ourselves black and white involved and those in between. This must stop because the reality if you stay outside of your box then you begin to realize the black and the white conflict is nothing but a diversion so that those who are involved in big business those who are involved in religious enterprise, we are allowing ourselves to be exploited by them. For their benefit, not for your benefit, not for my benefit, not for the benefit of our children, but we are exploited by big business and religious power for their benefit. We have been conditioned for black to hate white and white to hate black and these Things are continued on because I will tell you, those in power could have stopped this long time ago because they are the ones who started it. But they want black people to hate white folks and they want white folks to hate black to keep this as a diversionary tactic so that we can uh, continue to be uh, uh, exploited by those in elitist position. And they got some plans and some humdingers for us if we listen to those who are coming out. But see, we too involved in going to watch Iron Man. Fantasy. We spend time in the movies. Fantasy and fiction. Playing video games. Being drunk. Having a penis in our mouth. Licking vagina. All kinds of doing illegal drugs. Our minds are wrapped up in the foolishness and the evil and the immorality of the world created by the powers that be, that we don't see. Anything that goes wrong, you want to blame Obama or somebody who you think you can see. There are powers around that we don't have no idea of what they are about. 
Just like you might see a superstar. May he rest in peace, my brother Michael Jackson. We seen Michael on the stage do his thing. But Michael Jackson was backed up and there were other powers behind Michael Jackson. You don't know who the president of Sony is. You don't know who handled Michael Jackson's business. There are powers around him that you don't know nothing about. So when you see Obama or any of these people on TV, believe it, there are somebody more powerful than them. All these people that you see in the United Nations, there are folks more powerful and control them like puppets. This black and white conflict must stop for the benefit of both parties because both parties are being exploited. Both of us are being used. But I want to say to my Caucasian persons who are viewing this video, we must stop being defensive when you hear black people talk about well, the white man this, the white man that. It's true. Just accept it. Stop being denied. Your ancestors have done what they've done. In fact, they created this problem. I'm sorry. They did. And other white folks that know it will tell you white people caused this great problem that we're in right now. I want to talk to black people. Don't you get high and mighty, see? See? Because our ancestors, if we go by what you say, that we were the original people, it is true that we are the, our ancestors, we are the architects of, we are the creators of science and music and so on and so on. But at the same time, y'all want to try to paint us like we righteous and God-like people, and that's not the case. Because even this white man, who some of y'all call wicked and evil or whatever, he produces things like cars, and and he has fantastical sciences. He has achieved great things also. So just because they built the pyramids, just because they created different sciences and astronomy or whatever, they also done some bad things that was a detriment to us as a people. And if they were the first people, and the white man came after them and copied, not only did the white man copy them in their greatness, but he also copied them in their unrighteous behavior. Do you, are you listening to what I'm saying? They copy, it's just like, you are the example for your children. Your children watching you. So if the black man was the first man, the original man, and the white man is like a child learning from the black man, then he's picking up the good traits, but he's also picking up the bad traits, just like your children. If you are a parent and you smoke it, your children want to copy you, and they smoke. So they might, might copy your greatness and be a doctor or lawyer, but they also might pick up your cigarette habit. This is how you should look at things. So it is fault on everybody's part. The only thing that happened with the Caucasian people is they took our unrighteous self and got real good at it. And they took it all over this planet. Now, it's like the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. Now it's time for us to clean it up. Look how the oil is killing the different creatures. Look at how this conflict, black versus white. Look how many people have died senselessly because this has polluted the human family. Like that oil slick in the Gulf. Killing all kinds of life. Look at all the people that you can have good friendship. We can have the peace that you dream of, that we only talk about. But we got to get real. And that's why this is the reality temple. This is all our fault. And we got to come together as a human dynamic to squash it once and for all. Otherwise, the white folks will continue to suffer as well as black people. Y'all done your comments? Y'all got what I really want to say? Time is out. This wasn't it. It's reality. It's tough on earth. Jot down your comments.
And let's think about this. Peace, y'all. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, I am the mighty, mighty, mighty. <laughs> I got that from Don Cornelius. I'm the mighty, mighty, mighty Angel Snuffin' Up 7. And welcome once again to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I am your host, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Rock. Another short video. <laughs> Alrighty then. On this busy, let us get yo busy. <laughs> I was just thinking. Because this is the reality's temple, so we need to look at things in, in the most real sense that we can. I want to talk about the soul. Most of us relate to what is called the soul. Uh, our definition is based on religious teachings, whereas when this physical body no longer functions and death uh, proclaims this flesh then what is known as the soul is forced to evacuate this body and this soul or the spirit leaves and goes to uh, heaven or hell or a place in the middle until the judgment day according to uh, some religious teachings. Now this video should be short because I just want to make us think. I, uh, I don't know what this soul looked like. Or this spirit. As of this time. We can't bottle the soul up. We have no idea. We, we have no idea of what it is. There are no machines that have. That can. Uh, spot. That's not the word I'm looking for. What's that word I'm looking for? Anyway, there's no machine that can verify or you can put this machine around a dying person and the machine can analyze and you can see something that we can say, that, see, that's our soul. See, some people are, are, are idiots. They always talk about, you can't see air. You can't see this. There are machines that can can show us air. You can take a cigarette, blow it into the atmosphere, and it floats on something. There's something, there's something that can verify there is, there is an existence. We may not know what it is. We may not, our eyes may not be able to detect. That's the word I'm looking for, detect. A machine that can detect the spirit. A machine that can detect the soul leaving the body. So that is why in religion we are asked to believe this teaching about the existence of a soul. Because we have no machine that can detect. There are machines that can detect air, carbon dioxide, gases that we cannot see or smell. We have machines that can do that. We sometimes can rely on animals. There are some animals that can detect these different gases. We know that they exist. We can, and we know they exist because we can take them, manipulate them, and use the gas, these, these things that we can't see, even these germs. 
we need micros microscopes to see the germ, but they can detect, they have found, we have found these are real, and anything that is real, we can take it and manipulate it so that it can benefit ourselves. Because that's our reality. Anything that we know of in our reality, if we can detect it, we can use it. It could be real. Just because you cannot see it, just because you cannot touch it, don't mean it don't exist. But until we can have a machine or an animal or, or a tree, something that can make us to know that this is our reality, then it is fiction. It is fantasy. So that's why, again, we are asked to believe in the spirit of the body. But there has to be something. Something has to cause us to function the way we do. What is causing our hands to move for us to speak? For us to be who we are? We have to have a soul. In the black community a long time ago, we used to have soul. And what was soul? Soul was really just simply having the happiness in life. The ability to express our emotion. You can feel our emotion when we dance. You can feel our emotion when we sing. You can feel our emotion even when we were slaves on the plantation. No matter what we did, you can feel our emotions so our music by black people was used to be called soul music because you could feel the emotion now it's called R&B rhythm and blues music but it has no soul and you can see that the soul has left because the people that listen to R&B and any music that don't have no soul, look at them. They don't know what love is. They don't feel the emotionless. But that's not my subject. But you understand. Because if we had our soul black man and woman, you couldn't go on YouTube and be talking about another black man the way you do. If we had soul black people, we wouldn't be Calling the black woman a hoe and a bitch if we had our soul. This generation of black people, I call them dark Europeans, and that's what you are and have become because unlike black people, you've gone backwards. Because when you disrespect the black woman, when you shoot down black men in the street by your own hand, ain't no white cop, ain't nobody white did a damn thing. You're doing it to yourself because you lost your soul. You lost your emotion and feeling for your own people. That's why it's easy for you to do. So don't tell me don't have a beef with a dark European because I know that dark European has lost his soul. And that which has lost his soul is dead. Anything that don't have a soul has died. Exactly what is the soul in our reality? I'm not talking about figurative in our reality. The soul, or that which we call the soul, or we know it as a soul, simply, brothers and sisters, you don't want to hear this because we've been influenced by religious teachings. But our soul, could simply just be the proper functioning of a brain. Remember the scarecrow from the wind? If I only had a brain. You are not legally dead until the brain stops functioning. When a person goes into a comatose state, or a vegetable like state they have lost the functioning of their brain 
So you have a body that is heart beating, lungs breathing, but they look like they're dead. And when you look like you're dead, or when you're dead, you lose your soul. So the reality of it must be, the soul really must be your brain. And the black people in this country, you are called, we are called Negro. That was the first thing we were called. I believe it is in the Greek language. The C and the K are interchangeable with the G. So instead of being called Negro, you would be called Necro or Necro. And necro is the suffix of necrology or necrologist. Necro means dead. Necrology is the study of the dead. And anything that has died has lost its spirit, has lost its soul, has lost its ability to use your brain. So that is why, brothers and sisters, we live today and the black man and woman in America we are emotionless because we've lost our soul. Because we've lost our ability to properly use our brain, we have become comatose. But now the time has come that past teachings be brought to a higher evolution or put to the side period and a new idea, a new creation must come a new way of thinking to pump life. So now it's time to give these dead people, these people called Necro or Negro or, hey, my nigga, it's time for them, for us to give them CPR to get their heart pumping. But if the brain dies, it don't make no difference what you do to the heart. It don't make no difference what you do to the lungs. Because once the brain dies, which is your soul for real, then you're dead. Then a body will be there, it will be functioning, but it serves no purpose. It might as well have be dead because once your brain gone, it's the soul. We who are black people in America, we don't function like living people. We function like we're comatose. We're breathing. Our hearts are beating. But our brain is dead. <laughs> and you want to know something about people that's in comas? People who are in vegetable-like conditions? You ever notice? Have you ever seen these people? They can smile. Some of them can talk. But they're lifeless. And that's how we are. We talk. We can dance. We do many things as a people. But we're lifeless. Because dead people, dead people can't influence nothing. Only the living, the living can influence the dead. But the dead can't influence and do nothing. And that's how we are. Because we are mentally dead. We've lost our soul. And we're happy to say rhythm and blues. Because we're comatose. Because we got the rhythm. And we can't feel blue. But we lost our soul. So soul music don't exist no more. Only comatose music is left. Brothers and sisters, just think about it. Your soul is your brain. Once your brain goes, that's it. That's the real soul. Not nothing spooky. Not no spirit flying out of your body going, once this brain is gone, you're through. And we as a people in this nation, we are through because we've lost the ability to properly use our brain. Thank you for listening. This is your brother, Tali Gimara. Jump down your comments. This wasn't is the Realities Temple.
peace forever and always. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra, and this is the Realities Temple on Earth. Um, please excuse the lighting of this video because it is still uh, bad weather here in this area, stormy, lightning and rain. So with that said and out of the way, uh, give you guys a weather report where, uh, where I stay. Uh, with that being uh, told, let us get into the subject of this video, which is very quick when we have a lot to, to talk about. This video is a message to black women or the black female. Actually, it could be for any woman. Any woman, not necessarily black woman, but because my audience is primarily black females, then I would uh, direct this message towards them. Black woman, women, you are an amazing creation of this universe. There is no doubt about that and it is sad when men mistreat you so bad because they really don't know who or whom they are uh, messing with. I want to warn you about this thing feeding your children with a bottle made of plastic and these chemicals they call Similac, these uh, infamil, these formulas. Your child was not designed to drink this manufactured poison and that's what it is because it's not natural for your baby. In this world you, woman, black woman, and women in general, you have been made to believe, and in this, in this society, you have been made to feel as though your breasts are just objects of something for men to play with, and something nasty and vile not to be seen in public because of those things. Your breasts, woman, and any breast from any female mammal was designed in order to give nutrition to a baby. No if, ands, or buts about it. That's what your breasts are for. But you have been made to believe and feel as though that's vile. You are uncomfortable with doing something that's natural as feeding your child on your breast. That's who or whom your breast were made for. Your baby, your child. When you place that child on your breast, not only are you giving that child critical nourishment, but you're bringing a closeness, a human emotion, a feeling to your baby, a connection. When you place your child on a bottle made out of plastic and infamil, similar, then you're taking away or depriving the child of that critical in its beginnings of life human contact. So since we were and have been raised on plastic bottles and fake milk, is it no surprise that we are fake? And we are cold and heartless like that plastic bottle. We have no compassion. We have no emotions. In fact, many of us hate our mothers. And we hate women. How is this possible? This is possible because we were raised on a plastic bottle. 
There is no spiritual or mental connection to another human being. And if it's not the bottle, we give our children cow's milk. Cow's milk was designed and made for a baby cow. You born a child of infant human being to give a cow's milk to an infant human being is in the critical stages of development causing harm to a new life. But at the same time, you have no problems taking your breath and allowing a man or perhaps a woman with 32 teeth in their mouth. And this is what I hear all the time. I don't want my baby to uh, breastfeed because the baby, when the teeth come, they are bite my breast. But you don't mind this person with 32 teeth in his mouth to bite your breast. Matter of fact, you said, oh, it feels good when it hurt like that. You are sad because you have no emotional co connection because chances are you are also raised on cow's milk, infant milk, similar and that cold, heartless, plastic bottle. This is so sad, so why is it a shock that we don't see that the, why the human being is such a bad condition that we find ourselves in? The baby has to go through so many problems, even in its beginning. Not to talk about drinking old cold baby bottle. Oh, well, we warm it up. Uh, duh. Okay, warm the Similac up. But what about the sperm? The baby starts off with bad sperm. Because many of these fathers are drunkards. They're dope fiends. They don't take care of themselves. So you got bad sperm to begin with. Then these mothers, they are also dope fiends. They don't take care of themselves. They are alcoholics. So you got drunk eggs and you got drunk sperm and they come together. Then the baby drinks uh, Similac from a plastic bottle. And you wonder why the world is in the condition that it is in today. Because the human being in its very beginning, in its very origins, when it was nothing to speak of, it came from bad building material. If we took the sperm and the uh, eggs or the ovum in which uh, many of us have been formed from, and we compare that to wood and use that wood to build a house, we would, we would be a bad house to live in. It would be falling apart. Weak wood. You don't just use any kind of wood to build a house. You use the strongest, the toughest, in order to build a house that's going to stand, be able to bear with the weather, and stand for years and years and years. This is why the human family is crumbling and has crumbled because it was crumbling from its very beginning. Bad sperm, bad eggs. Now you have human beings walking the planet, heartless. They care about animals. You know why? Because they was raised on animal milk. They care more about animals than they do human beings because they were raised on animal milk. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you, woman? Then, you don't know woman, but in your milk, you carry strength that you can give to that baby. Antibodies. Go look it up. All kinds of antibodies and enzymes in your milk that's good for your baby, to help your baby be strong, to help your baby think because in the beginnings of development is the brain. But if the brain has been made out of bad and poor materials, chemicals, manufactured similar, sucking on a bottle, the residue off of oil, petroleum products, what you think that's going to do to the poor baby's brain? Make us unable to think. And many of us, and it's very clear here on YouTube, that's the main problem. I am so fortunate myself. I was raised on the breast. I'm a breastfed baby. Maybe that's the reason why I have this thing about thinking for myself. Because 
the material, even though my father wasn't the greatest or my mother wasn't the greatest, but maybe because of the material that I was given at an early age, help form my brain so it can operate a little bit better. Some of you said, I don't see that. I don't see your brain working so hard. Of course you wouldn't see it. Because you're caught up in something that's unnatural. Take that old man off your breast, women, and put your baby back on. This is your brother Talik Ibn Ra. This was, and keep listening to, The Realities Temple on Earth. Peace. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome. Welcome, welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I am the Angel Snubbin' Up 7, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Tali Even Ra. You have to excuse me for looking a little sweaty, because uh, it is hot out here. And uh, I always take my camera with me, because whenever I get a break, I just love talking to my audience. I love talking to y'all. I like making videos on YouTube. I'm not going to lie. Now some of these people, oh, you, you, you ain't got nothing else to do and blah, 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 blah. It only takes 10 minutes to make a video. And yeah, I like it. I like it because I have a lot to say. You probably don't have a lot to say. You have nothing to offer. But I got a lot to say. I got a lot on my mind. Because I have a connection to the creation. And the creation, when you look in the sky, that's the creation. That's limitless. So if I reflect the creation, and I have a brain that comes up out of that, then I should be limitless too. I should be void. I should never be empty. I should always be bringing something. That's me. I don't know about you, just because you run out of stuff and don't know what to talk about, that's, yo, y'all really, <laughs> folks on YouTube, <laughs> but I want to talk to my sisters, and uh, I just don't understand, see, I was raised by women, and I'm going to always stand for women. And some of these people talk about, well, a, a, a woman can't raise a man. Can't. That's a lie. That's a lie because any type of manhood that I am, whatever I am, it was because of a woman. And apparently, and in fact, it was women. It was women that protected me. It was women that nurtured me. It was women that guided me toward manhood. I had to figure the rest out, but they got me there. They pointed me in the right direction. So she don't, she can't raise a male and can't really raise a man for say because she can't, she can't teach a man what she's not, but she can get you close as a mug. So I don't want to hear that crap. A woman can't raise a man. That's a bunch of baloney. And y'all sisters, y'all females, no matter what you are, Caucasian or Asian or Native American, whatever you are, don't never let nobody tell you you can't raise your sons and they grow up to be strong men. It's a lie and it's false. Chances are it's a man telling you that. And that's my, and that's the subject that I want to talk about. You belong to these religious belief systems. And you listen to political systems. And you listen to society that is, has been dominated by men. And the male always desires to create things so that those who have a penis have an advantage over you. Even though he's not worthy. He's proven himself in history to be an incompetent male. Now listen to me. When I was in the Nation of Islam, Louis Farrakhan for a few seconds tried to give women their props. 
and instead of the instead of the fruit of Islam being his security force around him he allowed the MGT the women of the nation of Islam to secure him for a second but see that didn't even last long and I knew it wasn't gonna last long because religion is biased against the woman you're nothing but somebody to breed with somebody to raise children with you're not seen as a higher form and you go for it you don't see nothing better for yourself you don't see yourself really as a goddess you see the male as a goddess but you second to him you don't really see yourself as an equal in Islam the women I'm just fine with putting a mask over my face and running around in a garbage sack because because I want to be modest and you like that because you want to be faithful to your religion and your religion is dominated by men root by men so of course now why should you women females why you gotta dress all modestly and cover your face because these men can't control themselves but the men don't have to do nothing they don't have to cover them their face they don't they don't have to go through all that drama only for you because the men control the religion the men who wrote the religion not God Allah ain't wrote nothing Jesus have not wrote nothing here all this is all this is designed and made by men and males but y'all give y'all money everything else is equal you give your money your time and you work hard all that is equal when it comes to the prophets of God when you talk about prophets there are female prophets, but they don't have nothing worthy of talking about. It's always about what Moses said, always about what Jesus said, always about what Noah said, always about what Peter said. Women don't have nothing to offer. How can you like that? Because you've been tricked and you've been deceived. You, the only difference between you and a man, that the man has a penis and you have a vagina and the penis came from out of the vagina the penis is nothing but a primitive form of vagina it's a out it's an offshoot of the female you don't give yourself credit and so since they say that oh yeah before I forget in Christian teachings of course you know Eve is the troublemaker she's not a full human being she's the rib of a man that's all y'all is in Christianity you're, the, you're not even a full human being you was made out of some sucker's rib an idiot sucker that caused the downfall of humanity and then he don't take responsibility like he should he blame you because y'all ate, ate some fruit and got tricked by a snake y'all that dumb women run from snakes women don't like little creatures like that what, what woman you know of like creatures worms and snakes and little ickety ickety creatures y'all are into that man play with snakes then after the man play with the snakes y'all might get brave enough wow that's that creature is not as dangerous as I thought then y'all might play with snakes y'all know women is squeamish you don't like playing with stuff like that in the nation of Islam we was taught that 75 percent of the problem of our of our sojourn in America is with the black woman because the black woman is the teacher the first teacher of the babies and all this nonsense it's nonsense the woman is the first teacher because she she gave us the baby but the man can be there he can teach just as well as the woman can but you put all of the burden the, the woman is the first teacher so if the babies go bad it's the woman's fault what about the men see the men never get no blame it's all 75 percent of the problem is on the woman and so the men don't have to do a damn thing but see if the men were men like they're supposed to then the woman could be stronger things will be better it's the men who really got the problem they don't spend time with the children they don't love the woman like they should 
But nobody wants to bring no subject up. It's all about the women. All about the women. Sisters, rethink you, re reevaluate your religious belief system, how you look at religion. Do you, are you, do you think God really wants you to be number two? This is not no equal relationship. And then look at men in charge. They are the dominant force. Look at, look at, look at, look at your condition since men been in charge. Nothing but fighting, arguing, killing, murder. Because they can't produce life. See, if you was in charge, women, females, since you bring into life and you care about life, then you have a different outlook on things. But see, these males, macho. I don't think anything about is solving problems with a gun and killing and fighting and fussing. Because they got to show that they macho and they still a bunch of sissies. They still ain't incompetent. They ain't got it going on. My time is up. Rethink your position on your religious beliefs. Don't be number two. Don't walk behind him. You just as great as any man, if not better. In fact, really. You closer to the God than he ever will be. You are the womb. You are the connection to the universe, not the male. He's your helpmate, not vice versa. Jot down your comments. Peace out, y'all. Time is up.